Good morning, Bucknoters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, November 24th, 2021. We have a very special show for you today. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Monica Daniels, mother of Paris Johnson Jr. and G. Scott Sr., who is the father of G. Scott Jr. Uh, I know that's going to shock a lot of you. Um, <laughs> G. comes on every other week, and uh, Monica's been a guest here a couple times. It's great to have you both, especially this week. Monica won the toss again. She has deferred. <laughs> G will go first. So to both of you, it's really cool. Even though this is your second year being par- Ohio State parents, this will be your first experience of the game. In my opinion, the best rivalry in sports. I know I'm not alone in that opinion. G, just um, let's start with this. Do you hate the team up north yet? I don't. And, like, I feel some type of way about it, right? Um, I feel like this is the first time that you're at a new school, you're trying to understand the way, you know, the lay of the land. I'm watching all of the fans on social media. I'm watching Dave Biddle. I'm watching all of the venom that's being projected (laughs) out there, the hate that's out there. And I don't have it in me yet. I'm just not gonna lie about it. However, I'm waiting, right? Like I'm (laughs) waiting for the day that I it can feel that hate. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know that I've ever looked forward to hating something. Like that's just, it's not really a natural way of being, but I, I actually feel like I'm in the minority. Hold on, pause. I am technically in the minority. Anyway, I'm in the minority. <laughs> I'm in the minority on hate. So I don't have the hate yet. Monica, you got that hate yet? I have to tell you, I've been in since. Paris committed to Ohio State because I was introduced to the team up north hatred during the recruiting process. So I'm all in. <laughs> Even though you deferred, I want to go to you on this, Monica, since you brought it up. So Paris um, shockingly was recruited by Michigan, in addition to every yeah. other college football program yes. on planet Earth. Um, you know, when he went up there and you guys had your recruiting visit, share a story maybe. I know Ed Warner was the offensive line coach up there. You know, what uh, kind of turned you guys off from Michigan? What, what were your thoughts on Coach Warner? Well, the reason why Paris decided not to pursue the process with the team up north is because of the offensive line coach at that time, Ed Warner. We felt that he was not a good fit for our family. I didn't just the thought of not only him coaching my son, but interacting with my son on a daily basis, I felt was not acceptable. I felt that, um, trying to choose my words here, so I wanna make sure I be respectful and and kind, but I just felt that, um, let me say this, at the time I was a single mom raising Paris and I wanted to make sure that Paris knew how to respect and have love for women. And I felt that if Paris was interacting with him, that everything I worked so hard to teach Paris um, might, might be some issues there. So I did not want my son to interact with someone I felt didn't have respect for women in sports. So I felt it was a need to share with Coach Hartball that we wasn't gonna continue that recruiting process. I mean, he knew everything I'm sharing right now, he's well aware of that. I wish I could say I'm surprised. That's uh, kind of validates everything I've heard about uh, Coach Warner as a uh, as a recruiter. Um, G did did Michigan recruit G Junior? They they did not. No, never never heard from him at all. So um, yeah, they didn't. But a uh, bummer. Yeah, right, right. I know. Bummer. I can see. I can see. Yeah, bro- I can a, see your bro- yeah, I, uh, broken. <laughs> I'm 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 broken hearted that that didn't happen. But I. I do want to admit something and maybe, maybe there's a reason for my lack of hatred for the team up North, because here's some truth. I don't get on this show. I'm always going to tell you guys the truth, but growing up as a kid, I wasn't really an 
an Illini football pl- fan growing up in Chicago. I like Notre Dame, and I like the team up north, football. And also, and also, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I got to admit something. And also, in the early 90s, are you kidding me? The Fab Five? I, I, I mean, what am I supposed to do? You have five <laughs> freshmen out there changing the landscape, the attitude, and all of that stuff. And so, yes, I am guilty of those. But you, I'm not going to get on the show and lie. But at least I won't say their name. At least I don't love them today. Isn't that what it's all about? Sometimes you get married and divorce, which that happens in life. And sometimes yes. you might love somebody at, at one part of your life, and then you don't, you can't stand them now. Now, everybody that's perfect has never been divorced. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the <laughs> folks like me that's been divorced a bunch of times and have previous <laughs> loves and have zero love for them now. I'm looking more forward to you hating Michigan than you are looking forward to hating Michigan. I can't no, I wait. I can't wait. For you I can't to hate wait. Michigan. I can't, and it's going I, to ha- it's I going to happen. Wait. That team up north. I'm going to have to do many push-ups after this show. That team up <laughs> north. Now I'm curious like when you guys talk to your sons this week, if you get a chance to talk to them, do you notice I know it's early in the week. We're only midweek, but like here it being Wednesday, when you talk to G, when you talk to Paris this week, do you notice any changes in their disposition? Is it status quo? Are they more focused? Is it what's different about them? Because I was over there yesterday for interviews. I mean, you can just feel the buzz, and it was a good buzz. It was, you know, Ryan Day was on point as usual. Got to speak to about four of the captains. The intensity has been ratcheted up, in my opinion, the focus. Monica, when you talk to, to Paris, do you notice any difference this week, or is it pretty much status quo? Paris is on fire. He's a natural competitor. He's he's ready for this, to be quite honest. I feel, I can't speak for G, but I believe that us parents from last year feel cheated by not having that game being played last year. So I know that they are excited. They're ready to go. And again, the team up north rival starts from the time that our sons are recruited. So this is ingrained in everything they know since day one. That's that that ticking clock that's in the Woody that we walk past every single day that we're in there that reminds us how important this game is and how everything begins and ends on this. And so he's excited. He's ready to compete. He's ready to move forward. So, yes. G, what about you? you? Ever no- go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You, you ever notice that um, when you go to Vegas, you act a little different in Vegas than you do in other places? You ever notice Just that? A bit, Just yeah. a little bit. Well, if you are in Columbus right now, the feeling in Columbus, in that town right now, is all about hatred for the team up north. I will be arriving in Columbus tonight. I'll be arriving in Columbus, excuse me, this afternoon. I will get to feel it then. As far as G Jr., I felt it in his conversation late Saturday night in his preparation for Sunday, talking about that. On Sunday after practice, I talked to him then, right? Well, excuse me, they didn't really have a practice on whatever on Sunday. It's kind of light or whatever. But everything on Monday, on their day off, going in there for film and everything. Oh, you can tell what kind of week it is by mm-hmm. talking to the Suns. I don't, if there's one thing I think we can agree on, no matter what's happened this year, None of it matters compared to this game right here. Yep. Like you, you, you can you can literally throw everything away. This game right here is the be all end all, and I think we're all on that same page right there. And so, as I'm talking right now, now I'm starting to get a little preacherish because I can feel the emotion coming on because yeah. this game is what matters right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buckeye Preacher is allowed to preach as much as he wants, especially here on the Bucknuts Morning 5. I love that nickname, <laughs> the Buckeye Preacher. It fits you so well. Yeah, I mean, it, it sets up so well. I mean, I heard Michigan fans in 2018, they were all psyched up. They thought, oh, this is our year to beat Ohio State. They came in here in Columbus. They were favored. Buckeyes beat the brakes off of them. A couple years ago in Ann Arbor, Buckeyes crushed them again. I heard Michigan fans say, okay, I'm never letting myself – you know get up for this game again here they are again they think they have Mm -hmm. a chance this is works out perfectly it's for all the marbles and a chance to ruin their season while Ohio State gets to uh, hopefully achieve all of their goals um 
G, we'll go to you on this. I want a couple of, of cool stories from Ohio State's coaches. I was going to ask you about Kevin Wilson, but I know you have a cool story about Tony Alford. I want you to tell the fans about that. What's a, a, a cool story you can share uh, from Coach Tony Alford? I have many. I have many stories about Tony Alford. Um, a lot of them, I don't know if I'm allowed to share. But here's one I will share. <laughs> don't get in trouble. Uh, yeah. <laughs> here's one I'll share with Tony Alford. First of all, I think Tony Alford is one of the best human beings in the world. You notice I didn't say coach. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, people don't care how much you know until they find mm-hmm. out how much you care. And I'm a huge Tony Alford fan. And I think that the Buckeyes, Ryan Day, this program is lucky to have a Tony Alford. But I think mm-hmm. my story that I want to share is the story of when things weren't going right. The story of which, uh, when remember during the time where they lost uh, Bajan Robinson, he didn't, he didn't come here. And then Kendall Milton, he didn't come here. And then it seemed like, oh my goodness, Tony Alford, what happened? The recruiting went down. And so everybody was against that. And I never forget, Tony Alford gave me a call. Here I am. I'm Who am I, right? He, we had developed a relationship during my son's recruiting. And by the way, I think Tony Alford was very instrumental in us picking uh, the Ohio State. But he just called me up and he's like, gee, I just need to talk man to man, friend to friend. And he was just telling me about what was going on in the recruits and what happened. And the one thing I told him, and it's, a, it's something that I've said many, many times, and you guys have probably heard me say, and I said this to Tony Alford, is this. Sure, maybe you did get those recruits. But can you look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself if you did the right thing? And he said, yes, I can. And I said, if, well, if you can do that, then going mm-hmm. forward, don't worry because the truth never expires. And I promise you one day you will look back on this whole thing and it'll be kind of a learning experience and it'll be a moment that most fans forget about. As a matter of fact, that story I just told you, most people do forget about that. Most people yes. forget about those recruits that were lost during that time because all you can talk about is what's happening magical right now mm-hmm. in that running back room. Oh, by the way, thanks to those dogs up front in old line yes monica would know something about that the offensive <laughs> line struggled for a couple weeks i thought against penn state nebraska who really there's some communication problems talking to guys like nicholas petit ferrer he said it was you know communication problems ryan day said listen it's little things we're gonna get it fixed and man that mm-hmm. offensive line has gotten it fixed real quick on tony alford B. John Robinson committed to Ohio State. It was a verbal, uh, silent verbal, and then people in his family talked him out of it. They talked about him going to Ohio State, young man from Arizona, went to Texas instead. You wonder if he's regretting that with the Longhorns being four and seven, the Buckeyes being where they're at. But, mm-hmm. you know, Ohio State's not uh, hurting at all. You, get, you land the number one running back in the country in Travion Henderson yeah. and Evan Pryor. And by the way, the fallback option they got that year, Mayan Williams, who's a heck mm-hmm. of a running back. So Tony Alford, yes, yeah. great story, G. Great story and great advice you yes. gave him. And, Tony Alford's looking like a champ right now, as he should. Monica, share with me and the listeners a story about <laughs> Stud. Greg Stadrawa, I'm sure you've got many. Yes. I mean, don't, you don't get yourself in trouble, this, but what's what, 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 what maybe a cool story you can a, share about Stud? Is this going to oh be a God. story about Stud? Is this going to be a story about Stud where he's not yelling at his play, at the players? Oh, my God. Yes. Just, 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 you know, just been singing stud. in church. He, we were talking to Stud loved, one time. We're like, he like, loves to yell. He well, loves I'm, it. That's I'm, just him. I've got to interject real quick, then you can tell your story. Stud, we're interviewing him one day, and one of the, I wish it was me, but it wasn't me. One of the reporters like, Stud, your, your voice is a little scratchy. What's going on? I was like, oh, just, just been singing at church. Just been singing at church. He just got off the practice field just yelling at his guys, cussing. We have to, like, we have to like edit our videos with Stud's like cussing on the field. Just been singing at church. Okay, that's my funny Stud him. story. Go, go ahead, Miss Monica. I absolutely <laughs> love Coach Stud. Anyone would tell you that I absolutely love him. I tell Paris all the time that Coach Stud is your parent at Ohio State. He can be your friend when you leave the Ohio State. He is your parent. And and that's how I I view him. He has been awesome to my son. He's been amazing to our our family, very supportive of Paris on the field, off the field. I I couldn't ask for a better position coach. One thing about Coach uh, that people may not know, because sometimes I think he gets a little bit People give him a hard time with recruiting, say Coach Stud is not a great recruiter. So I I hear the things. I hear the the little whispers on on the street about Coach Stud. Coach Stud is a great man, and he is a great coach. So during Paris' recruiting process, 
and who Coach Stud is today is the same person. He is the same person. And one of the things that was a highlight to me and to Paris is that Coach Stud took the time to go over all of Paris's high school film when he was going through the recruiting process, explaining to him what he needed to work on, what he was great at. And guess what? That same style of film study continues today. So I appreciate him. He knows the Daniel Johnson family absolutely love him. And he, he's a phenomenal man, a phenomenal coach. Right, can, I, can, I, can I, can I, real quick, I, 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 I'm glad Monica pointed that out. And I really want to piggyback on that because as parents, hearing you talk about Coach Studd that way is magical. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And here's why. In a profession where coaches get fired based on wins and losses, right? Mm -hmm. Wins and losses in the, in, in the W category don't equate to wins and losses for these kids in life. Right. And so oftentimes the reason why coaches are judged to be good and or bad usually has to do with performance on the field. So when Monica talks about Coach Dud in that way, it needs to be celebrated. When you hear a mom tell you how much she respects him, who cares about the wins and loss record? Because it's going to be that that's going to carry Paris Johnson for the rest of his life. Let me repeat. Nobody cares how much you know until they find out how much you care. And I just right. wish... I just wish that some coaches were evaluated more on how they are away from the field than how they yeah. are around the field. Because I tell you right now, in this coaching game in the world, there are some, if you will, um, oh my gosh, great coaches, mm -hmm. but I believe are only great coaches when it comes to winning. They're not great coaches when it's down, when the chips are down, or when maybe there's losing. Show That's me a right. coach that is good when the child is losing. That's the respect you're going to get from me. Very well said. I agree with that. Just a couple more things. We'll get you guys out of here now. You know, let's get to matters of very much importance. We're going to talk some Thanksgiving food. One of my favorite holidays is tomorrow. Thanksgiving yeah. family food and football, family food and football. I love <laughs> it. Um, all right. G we'll have you go first on this one. What is your favorite side dish for Thanksgiving? You can mention more if more than one, if you would want to, sir. If you'd like to. The number, one, the number one side dish in the world. I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. I'll bet you Monica's on the same thing. Now, 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 Dave, I have a feeling that you won't agree. Uh -oh. But the number one side dish on Thanksgiving, baby, is macaroni and cheese. That's right. That that's is right. The, that's the number one. one. Right? That's now, it. And, 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 and I know where you're going. You're Midwest. So for some reason, Dave, you got a little green bean casserole in your system. I can see it right now. You got green bean casserole all over you. And one last thing. And all you folks out there that's spending your time trying to uh, do homemade cranberry sauce, stop it. Get right. your cranberry sauce from the ocean spray can. The jelly one, you, you pour it out on the dish, it still That's got right. the ridges from the can. That's the best cranberry it. sauce. That's and right. Cut That's it. right. Cut it. it, it, it <laughs> don't, don't, don't be making me no cranberry sauce with them cranberries in there. No. That's all soupy. I'm not eating that stuff. All right. No, okay. No, oh no, you, you, got me, you, you got me almost right. I wasn't going to say green bean casserole was my favorite, but it's up there. I'd probably go with mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> But you're right. Of a course stuffing, you would. Some stuff. You go with the all. You're right. You, you go with the all American Thanksgiving. I've read some stories like <laughs> national. Like so I think funny. I read a story out of New York a couple years ago making fun of Ohioans for like a green bean casserole. I'm thinking I bet these people have not tried it. It might sound gross if you don't know what it is. <laughs> green beans with cream of mushroom soup and those mm -hmm. those, those crispy mm -hmm. onions on top. Man, no. I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. You're <laughs> right. That, that's 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 one of my favorites for sure. <laughs> Mrs. Monica, what is your favorite side dish tomorrow? My favorite side dish is macaroni and cheese. And, my, and I have to say, our favorite dessert in, in our family is my great-grandmother's sweet potato pie. So that's the go-to. We got to have a macaroni and cheese, and we got to have a sweet potato pie. Not pumpkin pie, but sweet potato you know, pie. You know Dave <laughs> Biddle loves pumpkin pie. I don't. <laughs> I don't like oh, pumpkin don't? stuff. No, I don't. I'm the only one in my family that doesn't like it. They're passing around the pie. Oh, my youngest daughter doesn't like anything. She's she's more picky than I am. Every they're passing around the pumpkin pie. I'm like, no, you can give me a little cool whip. 
I'm not. I'm not too ashamed. Like, just give me a little Cool Whip. That's it. I'll have a little Cool Whip. Uh, I, had, yeah. I had pumpkin. Pie, I had pumpkin pie for the first time a year ago. That's how really? much I don't like pumpkin pie. I know I'm, I'm the vast minority. <laughs> By the way, for the record, I love mac and cheese. I, my, my wife okay. makes homemade mac and cheese. My mom makes homemade mac and cheese. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> it is good stuff. All right. I want to finish the show talking about Paris's foundation. Does a great job. Yeah. The Paris Johnson Jr. Foundation. Monica, tell the listeners what they need to know. I know he has an event coming up and, and just share yeah. how the foundation is going. Such a great thing that he's doing, giving back to underprivileged youth athletes so they can have the equipment that he had when he was growing up and yes. just helping underprivileged youth athletes and helping military veterans um, you know, that have fallen on hard times. It's unbelievable. We have military veterans that are homeless, but it's a reality. And Paris is helping out with that as well with his foundation. I can't yes. say enough nice things about what he's doing. Please share with the listeners what they need to know. Yes, if you go to the Paris Johnson Jr. Foundation website, you will, you'll learn more about the upcoming event that's going to be taking place. So on December the 6th, Paris's foundation and also the Dream Sitter of Columbus is collaborating and giving away new coats, toys, and food to those in the community. And so if anyone is interested in participating would like to donate new toys, not gently, Gently used toys, but new toys, please. If you can donate those things to the Dream Center and the address is 38 West Greenwood Avenue in Columbus, Ohio. And all this information is on Paris's foundation website, which is parisjohnsonjrfoundation.com. I love what he's doing. Monica Daniels, G. Scott Sr., thank you so much for joining me uh, on the show. I know the listeners are Going to love hearing from you guys. Did love hearing from you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Go Bucks. Thanks to both of you. Thank you. And happy, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and the listeners as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Go Bucks. Let's hear that Buckeye swag. Best damn band in the land.